hello my dear students how you hope you all are doing good at your home so today in this video we are going to discuss a new chapter of class 8 which is an ecosystem so are you interested to know more about the ecosystem let's begin in this chapter so dear kids in this chapter we will try to learn or try to understand the definition of an ecosystem okay apart from it we will discuss about the interaction between the biotic and abiotic factor we will discuss the different biotic component of an ecosystem just like producers consumers and decomposers okay uh, meanwhile we will discuss the uh, uh, definition and the structure of a food chain we will discuss about the food web also we will discuss the different uh, types of pyramid in this chapter and we will learn uh, the about the interdependency among the organisms we will discuss the different types of in, uh, interaction between the organisms or among the organisms just like symbiosis parasitism and predation okay apart from it we will have a brief account of the abiotic and non living components such as air soil water we will discuss the role of climatic factors such as sunlight temperature and humidity winds for an organism okay and and at last we will discuss about the forest ecosystem so are you ready to learn more about the ecosystem let's move further in this chapter environment as you know that we are surrounded by so many things including the various plants and animals water air sky and soil and clouds etc many more things are present around us okay all that surrounds and affect the life of, of an organism is, whether it is plant or animal is called the environment it environment includes the three important factor or components just like abiotic biotic and cultural factor but in this chapter we will primarily discuss about only the biotic as well as abiotic factors what are these factor let's try to learn it okay biotic means living so living factors so under the biotic factors we will have to study about the plants animals and other life forms just like microorganisms in abiotic abiotic means non living so under the category of non living factors we will discuss about the role of light water air soil and temperature in our surrounding okay apart from it we will discuss the cultural factor cultural factor means any human activity which influences and affects the environment just like deforestation plantation uh, population etc okay but in this chapter we we are not going to discuss about the cultural factor we will only discuss about the biotic and abiotic factor in detail so what is an ecosystem an ecosystem is a unit where there is an interaction between the living means biotic components and their surrounding abiotic component and there is an exchange of material between these two components so this area or this place is called an ecosystem hence an ecosystem is defined as a dynamic system in which the living organism interacts interact with themselves and with their physical environment influencing the properties of each other okay so an ecosystem is self sustaining self regulating structural and functional unit of biosphere communities and physical environment contains a structural component of an ecosystem and their continuous interact interactions results in its functioning okay the term ecosystem was first time given by sir arthur tensley in 1935 so sir arthur tensley first time coined the term uh, an ecosystem an ecosystem can be restricted to a small area like a single log or a garden or a huge area like miles of forest i would like to tell you one more interesting thing our tongue an ecosystem can be as small as our tongue can be as big as a rain forest so our tongue because our tongue contains many microorganisms on it which keep on uh, interacting with the, the air we breathe or the food we eat so our tongue is a kind of 
an ecosystem an aquarium is also a small kind of ecosystem because in an aquarium various kinds of aquatic plants and fishes are present that keep on interacting with uh, the light water temperature etc which are the abiotic component of an ecosystem uh, on the other hand an ecosystem can be as big as an amazon forest or a rainforest an edge of a pond a village a river a lake are the various kinds of ecosystem an ecosystem is an open system and depends upon the solar energy from outside as its energy source okay so first we will try to discuss about the biotic factors which are the living components of an ecosystem so biotic components means the living components of an ecosystem on the basis of the food relations they can be put into the following three categories okay what are these categories first producers second consumers and then decomposers okay in this image you can see here an image of a plant which which are able to uh, synthesize their food by the process of the photosynthesis so they, that is why they they uh, will be put under the category of producer because they can make their food by their uh, own okay so next category is consumers here you can see this is a goat and this is a lion okay so both are the consumers because they cannot prepare their food they have to depend on other organisms to have their food to get their food they can they can't be synthesize their food okay the third category is decomposers okay so decomposers are the microorganisms that can decompose or that can simplify any dead and decaying complex material okay so these are the decomposers so one by one we will discuss each category in detail so let's move further in this chapter so dear kids first we will discuss the role of producers in an ecosystem most of the green plants prepare their food by using the carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and with the help of chlorophyll you know very well this process is known as photosynthesis that is why these are called the autotrophs okay so what are autotrophs autotrophs are the producers they are the source of food for the other organisms that is why they are called the producers they include all green plant photosynthetic bacteria and photosynthetic protozoans so these are the producers which are the biotic components of of an eco system next consumers what are consumers they are the heterotrophs they are called heterotrophs as their food requirements are met by feeding on other organisms because they cannot make their food so that is why they are called the heterotrophs they are also called the phagotrophs because phago means to eat okay they obtain their energy from producer directly or indirectly they are the, they are mostly animals they are called the consumers because they take their food by consuming plants or other animals depending on the food they eat the the consumers are put into the various categories such as herbivores carnivores and omnivores what are these let's discuss first we will try to discuss the herbivores what kind of organisms what kind of animals they are they feed directly on the plants or or autotrophs okay they are also called the primary consumers for example grasshoppers rabbit goat sheep cow etc so these are the herbivores which they, uh, which means they directly eat the plants products okay carnivores what are carnivores they feed on the herbivores and thus they are called the secondary consumers so consumers that eat the primary consumers are known as secondary consumers so secondary consumers can also be eaten by other animals called the tertiary consumers they are called the carnivorous animals for example a hawk lion tiger etc omnivores these are the some organisms that feed on both plants as well as on animals they are called the omnivores for example humans as you know that we can eat pizza we can eat uh, uh, as you know that we can e eat both 
वेजिटेरियन एज वेल एज नॉन वेजिटेरियन प्रोडक्ट्स कॉक्रोचेस अपार्ट फ्रॉम ह्यूमंस कॉक्रोचेस फॉक्सेस आर आल्सो अदर काइंड ऑफ ओमनिवोस एनिमल्स ओके एट लास्ट वी विल डिस्कस द थर्ड कैटेगरी ऑफ द बायोटिक कंपोनेंट व्हिच आर नोन एज डीकंपोजर्स और सेप्रोट्रॉप्स सेप्रो मींस टू डीकंपोज ओके द फीड ऑन डेड एंड डिकेइंग प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स एनिमल मैटर दे सिक्रीट द डाइजेस्टिव एंजाइम to decompose the organic matter and convert into the minute particles that get mixed with the soil such mineral that become available for the growth of plant are taken up by the root of these plant this process is known as recycling of minerals so decomposers play very important role in an ecosystem which is known as recycling of minerals so these nutrients release and are used by the producers so in this way we have finished the biotic components of an ecosystem so dear kids now we are going to discuss about the interactions between the biotic components of environment and energy flow as you know that the sun sun is a, a, a prime source of energy for our earth or for any kind of ecosystem sun is a main source of energy so what happens what happens uh, during their interactions among the biotic components so we will try to understand the interaction of uh, biotic components by food chain and food web what are these terms let's discuss we have studied that all the biotic components depend on each other for the food in an ecosystem the living organism okay or biotic community have a pattern of feeding so the producers are eaten by herbivores 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 in turn are eaten by carnivores carnivores may be further be eaten by the other large carnivores also in this process the food energy is transferred from plants means from producers to the consumers okay herbivores to carnivores to the large carnivores who feed on them we can represent such interlinking of organism for obtaining the nutrition by food chain food chain is a sequence of organism in which an organism is eaten by the next organism in the chain okay so it is a chain of eating and being eaten for example in a forest grass is eaten by grasshopper grasshopper is eaten by frog frog is then eaten by a snake a snake is eaten by an eagle when eagle dies it decomposed by decomposers such as fungi and bacteria the feeding pattern in a community are much more complex than the simpler linear chains it is rather rare to see organism feeding only one type of organism if you take our example we are the omnivores so we can eat plants as well as we can eat various kind of non vegetarian products also so usually each organism feeds on two or more kind of uh, kinds and in turn is eaten by several other kinds of organism some animals like cockroaches and crows including humans are omnivores okay so this means they eat both plants as well as animals hence several food chains are interconnected due to this uh, reason several food chain may interconnected under the natural conditions this network of food chain is called the food web okay so this network of food chain is called the food web now we are going to understand the food chain and food web through a diagram but before then this we should uh, discuss the flow of energy through this diagram so here solar energy from the sun will go to the producer producer will utilize this solar energy energy by the process called photosynthesis okay so when a herbivores eat any plants uh, just like grass or any uh, uh, leaves of any plant so this the same energy will transfer to the herbivores when this these herbivores okay are eaten by the primary consumers okay which are the 
सो दीज हर्बी वॉज दीज हर्बी वॉज आर आर कॉल्ड द प्राइमरी कंज्यूमर्स दे कैन बी इटन बाय द सेकेंडरी कंज्यूमर्स विच आर द कार्निवॉज एंड सेकेंडरी कंज्यूमर कैन फर्दर बी इटन बाय द टर्सरी कंज्यूमर्स ओके सो दीज आर द बिग कार्निवॉज वेन दे एनी वन ऑफ दीज डाई देन ईच ऑफ दैम कैन बी डिकम्पोज स्लाइटली एंड स्लोली बाय द डिकम्पोज जस्ट लाइक फंजाई एंड बैक्टीरिया सो दिस इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ एनर्जी फ्लो ओके नेक्स्ट For example, now we are going to discuss about the food chain and food web. First example is food chain. It is a linear equation where the grass is eaten by the grasshopper, then grasshopper is eaten by a frog, frog is eaten by a, a, a snake, a snake then eaten by a, uh, an eagle. When eagle dies, it can be eaten by decomposers just like bacteria and fungi. but here you can see that various linear chain equations are interconnected at the different trophic level and making a complex network so this network will be called as food web for example grass or plant may be eaten by grasshopper as well as rabbit cattle or and deer each of these herbivores may be eaten by number of carnivores like frog birds snake and tiger depending on the food habits thus an organism can be a part of many food chain when several food chains get interconnected it becomes a food web okay food web shows the complex interrelationship among the organism so with this we have just uh, tr uh, tried to understand the concept of food chain and food web next these things we should keep in our mind that every food chain is start from sun that we have already discussed most of the green plant can prepare their food and are the producers all other organisms depend directly or or indirectly on the green plant but we must remember that it is the sun which gives the solar energy to the plant they convert this solar energy into the chemical energy of the food okay they prepare their food by the process of photosynthesis in the form of glucose or starch okay so all the food chain is start from the sun and no life exists on the earth in its absence so sun is the prime most source of the energy for an ecosystem or on our earth flow of energy we will discuss the flow of energy green plant trap the solar energy and convert it into the chemical energy by the process photosynthesis the food chain is start with the green plant food chain is start with the conversion of solar energy into the chemical energy for the food by the green plant the stored energy is transferred from one organism to other depend on the eating habit for instance when green plant are eaten by the herbivores the stored energy of the plant is transferred to the herbivores the herbivores will use some part of energy to perform its life processes while some part of energy will be stored when this herbivores eaten by any other kind of carnivores the same energy is transferred to the carnivore who feed on the herbivores and the flow of energy keeps on going thus the energy transferred from one organism to the other decreases at every step of the food chain 10% decrease is there okay 10% transfer is there 90% energy get decreased okay the flow of energy always take place in one direction also when is stored energy of an organism transfer to the next organism only 10% of energy is used by the dependent organism and rest is stored rest is stored to transfer it further in the food chain okay next abiotic factor now we are going to discuss about the different abiotic factors of an ecosystem the abiotic factors involve the non living factors we already know that such as light temperature air soil and water one by one we will discuss the role of these abiotic factor for our ecosystem light intensity and duration of light play plays an important role in the life of an organism uh, primarily uh, for the producers and it is in its activities for example photosynthesis an important process of the food preparation in plant takes place only in the process of only in the presence of sunlight diurnal animals become active 
only during the day time such as butterfly birds mammals some animals can uh, are called nocturnal animal become active only during the night time such as bat all cockroaches okay next abiotic factor is temperature temperature plays very important role for everybody's life the temperature determines the best climate and place for the survival of the living organism for example some play, uh, plants grow in cold climate some uh, such as pine some in extreme dry climate such as cactus many flowering plant grow in moderate climate similarly some animals live only in cold climate such as polar bear walruses eels etc some live in a dry climate such as lizard or scorpions okay wind wind plays a very essential role for the living organism plant need air for the pollination and seed dispersal many types of the wind also increases the rate of transpiration okay uh, furthermore all plants and animal need air to respire or to breathe okay wind carries water vapor the water vapor go under the condensation and fall in the form of precipitation on or rain okay water water is the uh, uh, water is called the uh, liquid of life so water is an important constituent of plants and animal body it is required to carry out the various life processes plant absorb water and mineral from the soil with the help of its root okay water is an important raw material uh, for the process of photosynthesis some plants dwell in water like water uh, uh, chestnut and lotus rice grows in water filled uh, uh, areas okay some animals also live in water like uh, hydra jellyfish whale fish fish and prawns can breathe in oxygen dissolved in the water with the help of gills terrestrial animal need water for drinking and various other activities okay so water plays a very important role in everybody's life next abiotic factor is soil plant stand formally in the soil by the uh, by their root and absorb mineral and nutrients and lots of water with the help of their roots uh, soil is in, is the home of many uh, living organisms many animals live in caves and burrows such as earthworms termites bear lion rat and uh, uh, rat and snakes so soil is a very important abiotic component for the survival of many animals humidity humidity is the amount of water vapor present in a air humidity of air affects the rate of water loss in the plants and animals this means the water evaporates from the moist surface at the faster rate uh, in the low humidity so humidity directly and indirectly affects the amount of precipitation on our earth so we have just finished all the abiotic factor but i would like to give you a task what is this task you need to observe plants and animals in your surrounding and note doubt note down the following observations uh, you will have to note down the names of animals which are present uh, uh, around you you will have to name uh, note down the names of animals which consumes plants okay you will have to note down or observe the names of the larger animal which eats the smaller animals around you okay you will have to uh, uh, write down the names of omnivores if anyone is present around you you need to use this data and uh, data uh, to construct the food chain and food web okay next we now we are going to discuss the interaction between the biotic and abiotic factors okay so there is uh, this is called the ecosystem in an ecosystem there is always the continuous interaction uh, among the biotic various kind of biotic and abiotic component no one can live uh, 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 independently uh, there is an uh, dependency among the uh, biotic as well as abiotic components okay life processes of an organism are gently or greatly influenced by the interactions of an organism with other living organisms as well as with the 
abiotic component of the environment. An ecosystem is formed by the interaction between the biotic factors as well as abiotic factor in a habitat. Habitat, habitat is called an area where an organism can grow, reproduce and live healthy. Okay, an ecosystem contains all living and non-living factors. The study of in interaction and relationship between the living and non-living factor of environment is called the ecology. So, ecology is a branch of biology in which we will have to study about the interdependency and interaction among the biotic and abiotic components. Some an example of ecosystem includes the pond ecosystem, forest ecosystem and sea ecosystem. In our next video, we will discuss in detail about the forest ecosystem because it is in our syllabus. Okay, so till then stay safe, stay healthy, keep learning. Bye-bye.